Hey YouTube, following is my continued discourse on um, defining some topics as we get into uh, this subject of a social safety net. Uh, this is the second video in the series, however it should be able to stand alone. Uh, quickly for review, what I'm doing is, is mainly quickly identifying what I mean by certain terms that I'm using. And um, actually I was feeling that through the process of defining these terms, I believe my argument will actually be made. Uh, in the last video, I talked about what wealth is and the reason for it, and I'll have a link below. And these are video responses to uh, a go growing discussion. Key, key to this response is a video by a person named Sned Snedmeister, who is uh, a person of foreign origin, from my perspective, being a, a United States-born uh, son of the American Revolution, as they say. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we're putting together these different perspectives, and uh, hopefully, I know in my case, attempting to come to a better understanding. Now, um, in this video, I will def define what I mean by the term morality. Uh, morality is a is a construct or an assembly of ideals and rules that a person, and in a greater scope, a community lives by. Uh, generally, a a moral what the term moral decision is used to mean as a a healthy and helpful term. However, morality and moral doesn't necessarily need to be uh, positive. A person can have very negative or harmful morals. Uh, a sociopath has morality. Uh, it's just that their morals are skewed against, say, what the status quo is or what what the guidelines of, of gentlemanly or lady behavior is. So to say that something isn't moral, I believe, assumes that we have an agreement and a subset of what constitutes moral behavior. But I don't think it's something that can be assumed. And I want to say it was the guy, he was running for the mayor of Chicago. And Chicago, there for a while, it was only a couple of years ago as of this posting, he, they were having some issues with uh, violent physical street crime. And he had said that the persons uh, doing this crime had morals. They were just different than what ours were, or, you know, in his case, the, the case of the law and order type people. Again... Law and order isn't by itself a good thing. It's a, a construct, a subset of ideas. Laws can certainly be bad. Uh, with the recent passing of Nelson Mandela in the apartheid system or in the system that the socialist system that went against them, laws don't necessarily have to be uh, a positive thing or a healthy thing. This idea that, that moral constitutes the greater good, I believe, is a is a very harmful thing and when we begin to assume that we all agree what is moral that ends up uh, bringing the conversation down a unhealthy road or in a road that I have no idea where we're going with it. Um, in the case of Snedmeister he was uh, and you'll, you'll forgive me for for saying so but what I understood your argument to be is a very uh, progressive Argument. Now, I use the term progressive to mean a person whose, whose political leanings con considers that society and rules and guidelines and morals are always progressing, always learning, always moving in a positive direction. Society is never better than it's been right now, the progressives argue. And it can only get better as we adjust it with these additional progressive laws, rules, morals, and guidelines. Um, I will, of course, post the argument 
that a society, a community, a group can uh, <laughs> can easily standardize a deviation. The status quo isn't necessarily a good thing. The times that we live in aren't necessarily the best, most evolved times in our lives. Communities can devolve. Would you say that the for Germania and for Europe, that the World War II times of Adolf Hitler were the best times in that point to, for Europe? Yes, of course, you can argue we learned from those lessons and we'll never go back. That's not my point. My point is, according to the progressive outlook, any time in society is the best time that it's been there. We just need to give it gentle nudges and gentle corrections. My argument against that is that society can turn the wrong direction all the time, and it has. Uh, now, are we wealthier than any time before? Are we better educated? Is communication superior? I would say most definitely. Um, but that, that brings us a little bit further away from, from the, the subject at hand, which is, how is man to treat his fellow man in need? And I use man as in mankind. I know for me personally, which by the progressive argument that my personal micro point isn't what this is about. Uh, Sned argues that it's about the macro and the greater good. I will argue that there is no greater good than uh, my own. Dr. Nash, uh, known for, uh, actually he was, the, he was the guy featured in the movie The Beautiful Mind, but he does a lot of stuff on game theory. He uh, conducted many, many experiments and, and many game proposals that argued the point of the greater good. And a lot of uh, greater good decisions are made through game theory. And it's something that I have studied quite extensively. And um, what game theory in a nutshell is, it, it lists out the pros and cons just like what Snedmeister advised that I do on, on two arguments. And then you select a decision based on the most positives of any of the decisions. Um, that's wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful, um, and it would really work if what we were talking about was a real thing. Uh, the greater good, the actual society, um, a country, isn't a real thing, okay? It is a, and I love, I love my home, I love my land, I love where I was born, and I love the opportunity, and I love the principles that it was founded upon, and I love uh, the people that have lived in this country in the past, and I have a great, uh, I, I revere uh, my European forefathers who, who also had, had great ideals and great outlooks. Now, when I talk about the forefathers that I revere from Europe, they're guys like John Locke, they're not um, some of these other guys. But I digress from that. Um, <laughs> it's I am of uh, of liberty minded enough to say that the idea of one country is at war with another country is nearly preposterous. I understand the reasons for it, but is the United States a person? Is the country of England a person, for example? Well, England's at war with the United States. What, pray tell, does that mean? Hmm? Does that mean that, for some reason, this mental social construct that has been created out of thin air now all of a sudden has the power to do harm to individuals? Um, we talk about we need to not discuss the micro effects and just concentrate on the macro. The macro is combined of various elements of the micro. Consider a forest. A forest isn't actually a thing. 
A forest is a word that we use to describe a group of trees and, and other little ecological things. But a forest, it's, it's about the trees. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and, and leave it there because I wanted to make sure that everybody understood what I thought as moral. And um, and we'll uh, we'll post this up and give it a few days and then move on. Thank you all for watching and um, comments and whatnot are of course welcome if you can figure out how to do it. <laughs> See y'all later.